Hi, right, Jimmy. Um, could you talk us through the conversations with Glenn when the two of you got to the middle? Just sort of, you know, looked like clearly quite a tough pitch to start on. Did you have a rough idea what might be defendable? Um, yeah, like we, we sort of talked throughout the innings as a group, uh, as a batting unit about what we think's par, and, and we were sort of discussing uh, from the halfway point that anything over 150 would be would be a really good score. So, um, yeah, when we came out there, it was just about trying to get underway, um, trying to face a few deliveries, get used to the surface, and um, sort of hope that we could make it up at the back end there. And, um, yeah, obviously me and GP have batted together quite a lot over the last couple of seasons. We sort of know each other's games quite well, so... Uh, we knew with that short side, um, if we could get in and have the left-hand, right-hand combination going at the end, then one of us could always be um, trying to attack and the other one could be trying to um, basically get the other one on strike. So uh, it ended up working quite well. Um, and in terms of the pitch, you've obviously both played a fair bit around the world. Was it just a case of sort of using those experiences of playing on pitches with real low bounce and looking at those to, to yeah take them in today? Yeah, well, we knew that uh, it was the kind of surface that the your sort of 8, 9, 10, 11 would struggle to come out and, and hit on, I think. Um, sometimes when you play on surfaces back in Australia, New Zealand, uh, England's white ball surfaces, you, you can sort of bat guys like Adam Milne and, and Tim Salvey to come out and, and score 10 off 4 or 10 off 3 at the end. But uh, we knew because it was that extra bit challenging, it was a little bit slow, a little bit two-paced, um, that, that me and Glenn would probably be the guys um, to have to take us uh, that you know length deeper and... Um, yeah, as, as we said, you know, anything over that 150 would, was the first port of call, and once we could guarantee that, then it was about seeing, uh, trying to see how, what we could get after that. Um, how's Ishodi doing after the blow he took in the field? Yeah, he's good. Uh, Ish is a, a pretty tough customer, so um, yeah, you know, sort of histrionics from his part. So uh, you know, we took him off at the end there more as a, you know, to give him a bit of a break and a bit of a rest. So uh, we've only got one day before that Afghanistan game. Obviously, with the you know the concussion protocols and stuff, I, I assume he'll have to you know be monitored from that perspective. But um, at that stage, we're certainly expecting him to be fine. Uh, and just lastly, how aware were you of the fact that there were what 1.4 billion or so Indians cheering on your opponents? Uh, <laughs> Somewhere between zero and one percent, I think. Um, you know, we're pretty good as a unit uh, at sort of keeping what what's necessary to concentrate on in the front of our minds. And um, you know, there's been a few occasions over the last couple of months where there's been a lot of people talking a lot about us off the field, so it doesn't bother us too much. So it's just about going out on the field and, and getting done what we had to get done. And um, obviously, there were a few different permutations around run rate as well after the game. But for us, it was just about winning the game, moving on to Afghanistan in a couple of days. Cheers, Jimmy. Hey, Jimmy, it's Andrew Vorman from Stuff Back in New Zealand. Um, congratulations. Um, you and Glenn ran 10 twos while you were out there. How important was that in terms of creating a bit of pressure? Oh, extremely important. I think when you play on a service like that, it's not going to be like it is, you know, in Dunedin or, or the Cake Tin or Eden Park. You're not going to come out and, you know, hit four or five boundaries in ten balls. So um, it's a lot more about trying to put pressure on balls in different ways. And I think we, we were talking after the game. I think we got s mid 70s, 74, 75 or something off the last five overs. So uh, it was certainly a, a different way of skinning the cap. But um, we sort of knew that, as we, as I mentioned earlier, anything above that 150. Um, would be a challenging total and um, GP is obviously a, a pretty quick customer so it was a bit of a challenge for me to keep up with him but uh, the old legs have got a little bit of pace in them still so it wasn't too bad. Um, from your perspective how good was it to sort of have a decent bat? Um, obviously haven't had to do much so far um, at this World Cup but good to be able to contribute no doubt. Yeah it's the nature of how we play our T20 cricket to be honest I think even um, back in New Zealand you know, I don't have the stats in front of me. I, I can't imagine I would have faced more than 20 balls very often for New Zealand. So, um, you know, it's all about trying to you know, load up the back end with wickets in hand and come out and be explosive. And um, that's just the nature of the game um, in this team. I'm batting a lot in the nets at the moment. Luke Ronke's, you know, putting a lot through his shoulder for me to, to try and keep a nick off the park and away from the game. So um, it's just about being as free as I can be and, and as clear as I can be in my game plans when I do get out there. And, um, the nature of being that number six all-rounder is that you, you're going to be um, tasked with the game when, when the game's in hand. So there's going to be in those pressure situations, whether it's today or a, or a semi-final or a final moving forward. So uh, I'm always ready for that. And um, certainly no excuses from a number of balls face point of view. Um, you mentioned net run rate. Um, obviously, it's pretty simple now. It's just win on Sunday and you're in the semi-finals. Um, is it good to have just some clarity in that regard, I mean, obviously you're trying to win every match, but 
you now know it's just going to be a simple case of getting the result? Uh, yeah, look, honestly, you know, there's been a little talk about that from the outside. I think for us, you know, even before the very first game of the tournament, we knew um, it was knock over one of India and Pakistan and, and win the rest of the games and you're through. It's a pretty simple um, equation. So, um, look, we've been focusing on each game as it comes. Uh, there was certainly um, zero disrespect to, to Namibia or Scotland from a you know a world rankings point of view going into each game. We sort of knew that um, all the teams have enough quality to knock anyone over on their day. So for us, it's about, just about going out and um, taking care of our games. And um, I'm sure it was at the start of the tournament, if we'd been offered you know, a, a virtual quarterfinal against Afghanistan last game, you know, we would have taken that. So um, we'll prepare for the next game just as we have um, the three or four leading up to it and, and hopefully we can be on our game again in a couple of days. Yeah, you've obviously come through just to finish off these two matches with Namibia and Scotland. Um, yeah, you have been tested at times and it must be good to sort of, you know, have that in the middle of a tournament. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's always a, a foot in each camp, isn't it, if... If teams struggle to win, you know, four or five down, and, and their tail end needs to bat, then people say they're not on top of their game. If they win one or two down, then people say their middle order hasn't had any batting. So there's always going to be um, people finding a reason that you're you're not in form or you're not going very well. So um, for us, you know, we're confident in the way I go, we go about our game. We've got a settled team now. Um, we can move forward and prepare for each game, as I mentioned, as we always do. And um, whether it's Guppy hitting a hundred again, or whether it's me and Sat or, or Tim Sally trying to finish off innings. You know, we've had plenty of experience at both of them over the last couple of years, so um, we certainly won't be worried either way. No, oh, cool. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, Jimmy. My question is to you is that how the bio bubble is affecting the players mentally and what you do during the bio bubble, like when you're not allowed to roam properly? Uh, yeah, it's, it's certainly less than ideal, I think. Um, you know, you when I look back at the, the 2019 One Day World Cup in England, it was before everything kicked off. You know, guys were going off and, and having time away from the team and, you know, rejoining and, and everyone was always fresh mentally, whereas um, this tournament's been a lot more about spending more time with guys, you know, being uh, in each other's pockets all the time. So I think that's where the, the culture of the team becomes really important. And we're really fortunate. We've got a bunch of guys that really like each other's company. Um, you know, there's certainly a strong culture uh, as far as ones I've been a part of. So um, there's just a lot of table tennis and a lot of, you know, coffee and, and that sort of thing going on. So um, you're certainly looking forward to, you know, touching down home whenever that time comes again. But uh, we certainly have, you know, our eyes firmly focused on the, the task ahead. And, um, you know, it's just a case of getting through each game. And, you know, there's only a, a couple of weeks left or so now. So, you know, it's not too much of a concern.